Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar today. We are very excited to be here with our friends from Rail Ops to talk about building an ILM fine-tuning workflow using CoreML and Dolphin Scheduler. I'm Tina Meyer, Senior Director of Product Marketing and Great from ClearMail. ClearMail is a unified open source platform for continuous machine learning, trusted by forward thinking data scientists, ML engineers, DevOps, and decision makers at leading Fortune 500 companies, enterprises, academia, and innovative startups worldwide. Before we get started, there's just one housekeeping item. If you have any questions during this session, please submit them at the chat window at the bottom right lower corner of your screen, and we will address them at the end of the session. For presenting today are Jill Guangzhou and uh, Victor Stock. Jill Guangzhou is a senior machine learning engineer at Wear Ops with several years experience in the NRP field. He has led machine learning teams and is an Apache Dolphin scheduler committed. He excels in various NRP solutions. Victor is an enthusiastic machine learning engineer and Tinker. Having worked on dozens of machine learning projects in the world of consultancy, he's now focused on making really cool happens in the space of green energy. Victor enjoys public speaking and is happy to share the magic of machine learning with anyone willing to. To those of Jungle and Krug, introduce an introduction to job with Scheduler, introduction to CoreML, and then we'll move into a demo for building the LLM fine tuning workflow using CoreML and Dolphin Scheduler. Then soon off with a QRM. And now I will hand it over to Jacqueline. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm super excited to share with you how to build a large language model fine tuning workflow using CoreML and Dolphin Scheduler. Just a quick intro about me. My name is Jie Guang, and I'm a machine learning engineer. Here's uh, my GitHub and email. If you have any questions about what I'm, I've, I've shared, feel free to reach out and chat with me. Recently, ChatGPT has become very popular. In the open source field, the large language model community is also very active. Last week, Meta released Llama 2, a very powerful base model. Today, we are going to build a fine-tuning model workflow for a large language model, which used Llama 2 as the base model. In this part, I will give a brief introduction to Apache Dolphin Scheduler. This is a platform for building reusable machine learning workflows. Apache Dolphin Scheduler is a powerful distributed open source workflow orchestration platform. It's, it is good at building workflow reusability. It can execute millions of tasks with high stability. In addition to common workflow scheduling functions, Apache Dolphin Scheduler also supports powerful workflow version control and data backfilling. It handles complex task relationships such as dependencies across different projects and workflows. Dolphin Scheduler offer a lot of ready-to-use task plugins. These include big data task plugin like Spark, Flink, the machine learning task plugin such as DVC, SageMaker, PyTorch, and Jupyter. And some scheduling logic tag, the soft workflow, dependence and conditions. And of course, it supports basic task tools like shared, Python, HTTP, and so on. This is an example of a machine learning workflow, which includes four tasks, the preparing data, train, training the model, deployment, and batch inference. Now, the training model task is actually a mini workflow in itself. Let's have a look at the picture. It's got a bunch of subtasks inside. It likes re reprocessing re data, training the model, evaluating the model, and so on. All we need to do is choose a choose an environment for each task in Dolphin Scheduler, kind of like running shell scripts or Python script in the command line. Then we just link them all up. The workflow is super flexible with powerful features like retrying if something fails, log management, environment management, and scaling tasks. 
But if you have your own machine learning platform, or maybe you are using the third part ones, for example, the SageMaker KML, you can totally use stop and scheduler to organize them into your workflow as task. As you can see the image here, data preparations is done locally on Dolphin Scheduler, and then the model training part, that's taken care of by SageMaker. Before we get into the part about fine-tuning large language model, Victor is gonna talk about ClearML. It's very cool machine learning ops platform, so let's pass it over to now. Alrighty. So thanks for the first introduction. Dolphin Scheduler is an awesome tool. Um, and so now I'm going to introduce ClearML. So my name is Victor. I'm a developer advocate at ClearML. Um, for ClearML, what it, what it does, like what is it? ClearML is an open source end-to-end -end MLOps suite, right? So it has, it's essentially, I always think of it as a, um, a toolbox full of tools that can help you in your life as a machine learning engineer. So right here, you can see we have uh, com different components, different tools. One of them is data ops. We have an experiment manager. There is training orchestration. We have reporting as well, um, model stores, pipelines, deployment, and that all is underbuilt by an orchestration layer that can either schedule or that can schedule your tasks on uh, computation or on hardware. So today, the most interesting parts, specifically for fine tuning the LLM flow, are going to be the data ops section, the experiment manager, and then the deployment part. Right? So that's what I'm going to zoom in on right now. Uh, so first of all, ClearML has data version management. Right, As you can see here, there is lineage. Uh, you can have different versions of your data set and keep track of them over time, just like Git would do for your code. Um, so if I may show you, this is what that looks like in the ClearML UI. Uh, let me make it a little bigger so you can actually see it. So you have different versions of different data sets right here. You can always see where they came from, what the previous versions were. Um, and obviously you also have things like previews. If you go here, uh, sorry, if you go here, you can actually see uh, different previews, but you can they're not limited to what is actually in the data set. As you can see here, you have audio files in the data set, but it's, you can also add anything that you want, right? You can add uh, tabular data. You can even add plots, for example, a histogram of the different class distributions. So this is a very, very powerful tool to keep a very clean overview of the different data sets that you have. Naturally, each of them also have an ID and it will become more important later on. Um, but yeah, we'll go into that into depth, depth in a little bit of uh, time. Now we have the experiment management as well. So this is the second part uh, or the second tool that we'll be talking about today. Um, the experiment manager is essentially trying to keep track of everything that you do in every Python process that you do. And that's actually how it works together well with Dolphin Scheduler is because Dolphin Scheduler does these specific parts or steps in your pipeline. And then ClearML can keep track of what actually happens, the inputs and outputs going in and out of each of those steps. So if we take a look at what that looks like in, um, in the UI here, you can actually see that I have a whole bunch of tasks here. And so every single line, every single bar here, corresponds to one single time that I run my code, either completely standalone locally or as part of, for example, a Dolphin scheduler pipeline. And then what you can see is we keep track of the repository, the, uh, the uh, Git repository that was used to run uh, your experiment within. You also have uncommitted changes or installed packages. These are all captured automatically. You don't have to do anything else than add three lines of code to your uh, training script. Right? You also have configuration, which is, for example, the hyperparameters. You have artifacts, which are the inputs and output models. You have information on when it was run, on which machine it was run, which GPUs it had available, console log output, scalers, which are the very important ones. There are your metrics telling you how well your model is doing or how poorly your model is doing. There is plots as well. So if you want to add any confusion matrices or line plots, things like that, you can always do that. Uh, within the experiment manager. And then finally, you also have debug examples. For example, you could show some bounding boxes on your object detection, or we also support text if you want to do LLM, like uh, will be shown later on. Now, finally, there, the um, experiment manager is not limited to just 
keeping track of all your code. Uh, you can also use it as an organization tool. So you have a lot of different tasks here that you can assign tags to and then filter based on those tags, depending on what uh, you want to achieve. So for example, I want only the Yolo V5 uh, ones in here, so I'll only get those. And it will actually uh, filter based on that. So if I now go back, the final stage that we'll be touching up on today, uh, and remember, this is all part of a larger system and it's completely open source. Um, so we also have deployment. And deployment specifically, this is a little harder to show, of course, um, but deployment specifically will take your model that you trained in the experiment manager or that was tracked by the experiment manager and that was, for example, trained as part of a Dolphin scheduler pipeline, and you can then uh, turn it into an API and then add some monitoring, add some statistics, and make sure that it's very visible what goes in and out of the model. Now, there is a lot of different uh, options here. Obviously, serving is a quite a big field, uh, but for example, here you can see that we have three uh, running tasks in the ClearML uh, manager. One of them is handling the execute the serving control pane. So you you will have to do everything with this task. But then you have the serving instance and the statistics instance as, as well. And then this will tell you everything you need to know about, for example, which model is currently uh, running. And then here you can see, for example, which endpoints I have currently running or which metrics are uh, running on that endpoint. Model monitoring specifically is handled by your external tool. Uh, it's, it's actually set up within Prometheus, and you can handle it with, for example, uh, something like Grafana, which you will probably see later on. So this is a very quick overview of QRML and what you can expect later on in the demo. So without further ado, let's take a look at how to fine-tune an LLM model. Thanks to Victor for introduction. A QRML is very cool. Let's make let me give you a quick overview of how our whole workflow goes down. Goes down. First off, Dolphin Scheduler takes care of the preparing data. Next, Dolphin Scheduler passes the PF data to ClearML to keep track of different versions of our data. When it's time for model training, we can pull out, pull out a specific version of our data from ClearML then, Dolphin Scheduler kick off the job of training our model, which actually runs on your own servers. During the model training process, ClearML is always on it, manage the experiment. This includes tracking details like model logs, metrics, GPU usage, and, and so on. At the end, after we are done training the model, we use Dolphin Scheduler to roll out a web service for Conversations. Besides, we also use Dolphin Scheduler to scale ClearML for production level model deployment, but we are not getting into that in this chat. The goal of our experiment is to let Lama 2 to speak Chinese. The Lama 2 check 13 billion model is a very, really powerful, but it's not that great to speak Chinese even though it's guessed what Chinese means. The main reason is that when the model was being pre-trained, there was just not enough Chinese data, only about 0.13%. Uh, here's, ex here's an example of a conversation with the Lama 2 model in Chinese before it was fighting. Even though it guessed my Chinese, but it, it still responds to me in English. But now, after we train it up, it's doing great job to speak Chinese. We can see the image for the result after training. Oh, okay, let's take a look at this video. This is the Dolphin Scheduler. We can click the project, then enter the LLM project. Inside the project, we can see the message of all tasks and the workflows. After we click on workflow definition, then we can see three workflows here. The first workflow is data preprocessing. We can click to enter. Then we can see the task within data preprocessing. It contains five tasks. Now we can also look at the model training workflow. 
it contains two tasks, poll data and training. The third one is a deployment workflow. It will start three processes. Since there is a sequence to start the process, we set up some tasks to manage the sequence, to manage the relationship. The poll is the definitions of workflows. Next, we can look at the workflow instance. Workflow instance are generated after we run the workflows. There are two instances. Because the training time is too long, so I ran one in advance. Next, we run the data reprocessing workflow. We set up to sample 10,000 pieces of data. After confirming, the workflow instance is running. We can check the status of the workflow. The data comes from two sources. First one is shared GPT. We can check the logs. After it processed, it will become fast chat format data, more than 20,000 species. In addition, we have Chinese alpaca data. It's also made into fast chat format data. Both have the roles of human and GPT. And after the data is processed, we will merge them into a single data set to train the model. This is all the data. We sample 10,000 from, from them. Our goal is to make number two able to speak Chinese. So I use the Chinese instruction data and multi-turn dialogue data to improve its Chinese multi-turn dialogue skills. Next, let's look at the task running strategy of ClearML. After the task is run, we can also get the ClearML data sets web page address. Let's open this address. Then we can see a data set here. There are two versions because I have run it once before. And you can see it is being uploaded. Let's fast forward the video. We can see that the task is complete now. Back to the domain scheduler size, the task has been complete. Next, we will run the training workflow. For the versions of dataset, we can choose the newly upload v1.0.1. And then we select the model base number two and we select the fast sheet format data and the path to save the lower weight numbers of steps to run. We generally set a higher number, for example, 10,000. Here we set 1,000 for a quicker run. We choose two GPUs and then confirm. After confirming, we can check the instance of the model training workflow. There are two tasks here. The first one is to pull data from ClearML, and the next one is training. We can refresh the status. Now we can check the training task in the log. The training call comes from QRAW with some modifications. We can refresh it again to see the new log. Then we look at the experiment records of model training in ClearML. We can also see our configurations, all the configuration information is here. For example, we use uh, we use 4 bits to run QRoller. Back to top and scheduler, let's check the new log. The model is currently loading. Because the training is will run for a long time, so let's take a look at the model training workflow instance that has been run in advance. Then we can check the log and we find the records of the task to create a mail platform. All logs will be here. 
including the task ID and our configurations, configuration of the star command. the amount of parameters in model training. This is the loss. At the end, we can also see the performance. We can check more performance indicators such as the training situations, uh, epoch, the training time. Also, we can check the situations of the loss. ClearML contains many indicators. This records of these indicators are automated. We also can see the configurations of task executions. They are all fantastic features. So back to the Dolphin Scheduler, after the model is trained, we can deploy the model. Let me stop the training workflow to free up the GPU resource. We can stop the running of the workflow. And we can uh, choose the path of the model just now. And the checkpoint. Let's see what we have shown. The last one, a thousand. We will go back to Dolphin Scanner and set a thousand step and confirm. After running, we can see the deployed workflow. We will keep running, they will not stop. Okay. You can see the this is the model loading. We can see the model path information. Let's wait a moment. We will speed up the video, speed up our model deployment, running situations. Then here, Gradio has already run. We can check the Gradio log. Here we'll print a demo URL and we can copy the URL to visit. Now we can talk to the model. I say Ni hao, that means hello in Chinese. Then if you now reply to me in Chinese. At the moment he can already talk to me in Chinese. The funny part here is uh because many of our data contains open AI model introductions data, so the Model also learn this information. Let's let him write a poem. Now he write poem in Chinese. This can initiate achieve our goal. That means we can make the Lama two chat model speak Chinese using Clear ML and Dolphin Scheduler to find you the model. You can also use your own dataset to train such a model. That's all the introductions of the demo. Thanks. In terms of Dolphin Scheduler, we simply, simply change task into a workflow and set up the environment that that's it. <laughs> when it comes to ClearML for data management, all we need are three lines of commands. Also during model training by adding a few lines of code to the training script, we can check this progress of our experiments. The first step is to initialize the ClearML task. And the second is to add a ClearML callback into the chain trainer. It's very powerful and easy to use. That's all I, I've got to share with you today. That's, thanks everyone for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Chilquan. Uh, let's move to Q&A now. Um, awesome presentation. Thank you for the presentation. It was wonderful. The red. Move in. <laughs> oh, I will edit that. <laughs> Our first question comes from Sophia, and I think, Jaquan, this one is for you. What are the next steps after using Clear Mail Sorghum? Okay. Uh, I think we can use Dobbin Scheduler to orchestrate Clear Mail Serving. This way, we can deploy production level model service, not just testing service after model training. Clear Mail Serving is very powerful when it comes to deploying models. I once posted an article on how to use Dobbin Scheduler to, to schedule ClearML serving. You can find it by serving the keywords ClearML and Dobbin Scheduler. Okay, so people can search for that. Um, we have another question from Steve. Maybe so you can handle this one. We are churning LLMs and need how to do data processing. Can this churn be used for that? So I can take this one. Um, so yeah, I think Dolphin Scheduler is very, very good. I didn't completely understand the question because my speakers are very bad here. Um, but I think Dolphin Scheduler is very, very good at the pre-processing step. Um, so yeah, this can be used as, as yeah any step in the pipeline. So if you have to do heavy pre-processing, you can just add it there. Um, and then ClearML can always be used to keep track of everything because that's kind of the flexibility of ClearML in comparison, like not in comparison, but in conjunction with other tools, um, is that you can just use it to track everything. It doesn't have to be a model training step. It doesn't have to be specifically fine tuning a model. It can be anything. And so we use it quite often for tasks involving quality assurance, involving pre-processing or post-processing. Um, in fact, even the deployment that was done by Dolphin Scheduler is actually handled as a task. Um, so all, as a task, and a task is an experiment in ClearML. So it can basically be used for uh, anything, and you can also just use it to track logs or to track inputs and outputs of um, a, a Python process that isn't training a model. Great. And one more question as we're running out of time. We need everything to be local. Is this possible? Victor, do you want to handle that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, definitely it's possible. Um, I think the, the, the guys at Dolphin Scheduler are awesome for releasing such a cool tool, uh, completely open source. Um, ClearML also is open source. So the package and as well as the server actually are completely open source. Um, ClearML also has hosted offerings, but if you need everything local, if you need uh, power over your own data and, and run everything on your own machinery, it's completely possible for both tools. Wonderful. Uh, we are out of time for this session, so everyone else who has left questions, we will get back to you. So don't worry, we will address your questions individually. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who is attending. Also, a big thank you to Jai Kwang and Victor for presenting today. I think everyone has learned a lot. So with that, I'm closing the session. Thank you very much. <laughs>